This is the word that came to prophet Jeremiah from God. Go down to the potter's house and there I will give you my message. said, Can I not do with you as this potter does? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand. The journey of becoming an earthen vessel involves a series of processes. From region to region, people use different techniques of making pots. Each potter has his or her own unique ways of fashioning. But in each case, the clay has to go through similar stages. The loose soil travels a long way before it gains the desired shape. The potter is a visionary who has the pot already conceived in his mind, even before the earth knows about it. He envisions the unique characteristics the clay should possess, chooses the location and the depth from which the mud would be brought out. The still mud is identified, dug out of its place and submitted to a transformational process. The story of the pot is the story of each one of us. As the cleansing of the clay from all impurities is crucial to the making of a pot, so also the richness of life lies in our capacity to sort out the essentials from the non-essentials and in nurturing the good elements. In some areas, the cleansing is done through the help of water. The potter mixes the clay with other materials to suit the definite plan. She carefully separates the clean material from the rest. The pure clay is placed over a bed prepared for it 
and then allowed to dry. The dry soil without the presence of water develops cracks and breaks. Water unifies the dry and fragmented particles and transforms the dry earth into a pliable material. Water represents the spirit of God that unites his creation. Just as the potter invests something of himself into each pot, the divine potter has breathed his own spirit into the human heart. This spirit cleanses and transforms the hard and dry elements in our lives and makes us docile to his working. The presence of air bubbles creates cracks and explosions on the pots during firing, causing damages to otherwise perfect pieces. Kneading and wedging ensure de-airing, eliminates bubbles, lumps or other foreign materials and makes the moisture content to be even throughout the clay. This process is continued till the clay becomes supple and pliable this is an initial but indispensable stage of becoming. Only when the clay becomes resilient in the hands of the potter does it become ready to reach its full potential. The battle against the ego is a lifelong process of constant purification that the divine potter subjects us to so that we are ready to be shaped according to his plan.